Good morning, church. I was glad when they said to me, come let us go into the house of the Lord. Um, I don't know if you've been able to hear the bell choir uh, you know, as you've been wandering around the building at all today, but I'm excited to uh, have them open up our worship service today. Um, and when uh, we met uh, as a worship committee a couple months ago, um, I said, how about we have the bells play on every third Sunday of the month? And, uh, and it was agreed to. <laughs> so uh, I'm excited about that. So uh, we have the handbells, and then we'll have uh, some uh, moving things around, and uh, we'll continue with our worship service.
Thank you, Bell Choir, for a beautiful, beautiful job. And now I just want to um, say words of welcome to everyone who is uh, worshiping here with us this morning um, in person or, or online. Um, may you experience God's presence during this time of worship. So let us be in an attitude of prayer and worship. Join with me, please, in the call to worship. This is from the uh, Psalms 12. Help, O Lord, for is, there is no longer anyone who is godly. The faithful has, have disappeared from humankind. May the Lord cut off all flattering lips, the tongue that makes great boasts. Because the poor are despoiled, because the needy groan, I will now rise up, says the Lord. I will place them in the safety of which they are The promises of the Lord are promises that are pure, silver refined in a furnace on the ground, purified seven times. On 
On every side, the wicked prowl. As violence is exalted among humankind. And now join me in the opening prayer. O oh God, the Holy Spirit, come to us and among us. Come as the wind and cleanse us. Come as the fire and burn. Come as the dew and refresh. Convict, convert, and consecrate many hearts and lives to our great good and to thy greater glory. And this we ask for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. says so. There's no asterisk. <laughs> lesson this morning is from Romans chapter 14 verses 1 through 12. Welcome those who are weak in faith but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything while the weak eat only, eat only vegetables. Those who, who eat must not despise those who abstain and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day observe it in honor of the Lord, and those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, Every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. If the little people would join me on the steps. Or big people, we don't care. Come on up. Good morning. Lots of girl power up here today, huh? I love the girl power. Wonder where all the boys are. They must have slept in, huh? Yeah. 
I think Dylan still needs a nap. Bless her heart. Look how slot tired she looks this morning. Goodness, did everybody stay up for that crazy ball game? And it took forever, didn't it? So, well, this morning, I have some pencils, and we're going to talk about pencils. I want you guys to look at all those pencils in there. There's lots of different kinds. There's big ones, little ones, skinny ones, even a little tiny short one. Look at that. But you know what? They all have something in common. Do you know what it is? What's on in, in every pencil? What's every pencil have that we need? If I think I heard Mr. Knopf say it. Nope. Wasn't you? But somebody said. An eraser. What do you need erasers for? To erase our mistakes. I think you got it. That's right. Well, my pencils this morning, they're short pencils, skinny pencils, bigger pencils. They're yellow, red, black, white. There's just so many different sizes and shapes. And you know, but a lot of them, their erasers are gone. And that sounds like I've made a lot of mistakes, huh? Because I've erased a lot of mistakes. Hmm. Well, when I make a mistake, I erase it, and I start over and over again until I get it right. Do you guys ever do that? Me too. Well, I don't know why I keep these pencils, because as many mistakes as I make, a pencil without an eraser is pretty useless, isn't it? Yeah. Well, these, er these pencils remind me of people like you and me. People come in all different shapes and sizes and colors, but we all have that one thing in common. We all make mistakes, don't we? Even when we don't mean to, right? Well, that's why God sent Jesus to die on the cross, to erase our mistakes. That was a great idea, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, when we do something wrong, we can ask God to forgive us. And because of Jesus, he will erase our mistakes and we can start over and over again. Unlike these pencils, God's eraser never wears out. That makes me happy, right? Mm -hmm. Well, just as God forgives us over and over again, Jesus taught us that if we forgive other people over and over again, well, one day Peter asked Jesus, how many times should I forgive someone if they sin against me or hurt my feelings? Should I give them maybe, say, seven times? Maybe if I said seven times, I'm sorry, would that be okay? What do you think Jesus said? Seven times sounds like a lot, doesn't it? I bet Peter was pretty proud of himself when he thought, hmm, I can tell you seven times I'm sorry, and I'll make Jesus really happy. Well, what do you think Jesus said? Mm -mm. Jesus said... You should say you're sorry 70 times 7. Does anybody know what that number is? Huh? 180. Oh, 490. <laughs> Good job, Julian. <laughs> 490 times? I think I would lose count. Would you lose count? That's a lot of I'm sorry's. But I think Jesus knew that if he said we should forgive 70 times, seven times, we would never be able to keep count, and we would keep forgiving over and over again, just like he forgives us. Hmm. Well, it doesn't matter if we're short or we're tall and we're skinny or round or red or white or yellow or black. We all need God's forgiveness, don't we? Absolutely. We also, remember, we also need to remember that Jesus taught us that we are to forgive others just as God forgives us. So can you think, remember that when you're on the playground this week? Sometimes we get knocked down, but get right back up, and it's okay to say, I'm sorry if you knock somebody down. But remember to try to be nice, and then you don't have to say you're sorry, do you? But if you, if you hurt someone's feelings, like your sister's, or your sisters, or your brother, or your sister, be sure and say, I'm sorry. I'm not going to make you do it 70 times 7, but a little say, I'm sorry, and a hug, and I think you'll be okay, okay? All right, well, let's say a little prayer, okay? I'll say the line, and you repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, 
We all sin and fall short at times. Thank you for sending Jesus to forgive us for our sins. Help us to forgive others the same way over and over again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you can go back and sit with your families. For most of 20 years, I have this point of view. <laughs> it's, it's really nice to be able to, to sit in the congregation as, uh, as worship is, is led by the people. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, you didn't know you were giving me that gift, but, uh, but I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, we do come to a time of, of prayer. Um, and as we've gathered in uh, Sunday schools this morning, we've, we've talked about a couple different names and situations. I um, want to hold a, a special time of prayer for Doris Randolph. Uh, Doris is uh, in hospice care right now, and, and we're looking at uh, her 11th hour. So prayers for Doris uh, and, and for um, Sheila, who is, is with her, uh, and her sister Vicki is also uh, with her. Um, a prayer request uh, for, from Julie Morris um, and from um, Sharon Turkley, uh, Juanita Conrad, Ed Keen, um, and uh, a friend of mine, Pastor Shannon Blosser, is in uh, Pea Ridge uh, near Huntington. And um, he has an autistic son who is uh, going through a rough period of life. He's, he's nine or ten years old, and um, they, are, they are struggling mightily to get the, the education system as well as the, uh, the, the physical care that, that he needs. And, and the whole family is, is under the weather to, to add to that. So, so prayers for the, the Shannon Blosser family. And we celebrate that uh, Mickey, um, uh, the, the daughter of uh, Greta Tyler, is... Uh, uh, in rehab after 67 days of, of being hospitalized, um, she is uh, continuing to uh, strengthen and improve, and, and we give uh, credit and thanks to God for that. Um, I know there are natural disasters happening around the world, um, and so um, I, put another, uh, I put another check on the plate today for United Methodist Committee on Relief. Uh, I want to remember... Uh, that that our connection is is around the world uh, right now as as we um, as we respond to natural disasters uh, around the world. Yes, what are some things you'd like to have? Do you feel welcome? <laughs> We're not going to ask you any personal details or anything. <laughs> Very good. Are there other people who would like to, to lift up prayer celebrations or concerns? Thank you. Our high school band had their very first competition of the year yesterday and did so super well. Amen. Got, um, three ratings of gold, one rating of silver, a parade rating of silver, and uh, our own McKenna Ryder was named a, an outstanding soloist. So, and Bo Burrell is a field commander at the band, and they got rated gold as well. So, it was all right, <laughs> all right. Thank you. I love I love to be able to share celebrations. Um, 
and there are there are names and celebrations and concerns that are printed in your bulletin and and I hope that you take the bulletin home with you uh, as opportunity for for prayer. Uh, so let us go before God in prayer. Um, I will uh, leave uh, some space in the middle if you would like to lift up a name uh, or or circumstance, uh, and then uh, we'll we'll close with uh, the the Lord's prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we are gathered here on a, on a wet, chilly day, uh, but it is a, a good place to be uh, in your house with your children, with one another. Uh, Lord, we, we come bearing burdens and, and we come with, uh, with laundry lists and grocery lists on our mind and uh, uh, thoughts of, of different things that have been going on and different plans that we have, and, and Lord, we pause. We pause to, to breathe you in, to, to lay our burdens down, to uh, receive the, the renewing spirit that comes from you. We don't know why you do it, Lord, but you do. <laughs> and, and we are, are the beneficents. We, we, we benefit from, from your grace uh, day by day, minute by minute, breath by breath. We lift before you these different names and concerns that we have brought up. Uh, we pray for Julie and Doris and Juanita. We pray for Ed, Shannon, and, and Mickey. Uh, we give you thanks uh, for, for Jane, uh, for a band, uh, for ways that uh, we are connected to one another that we don't even know about. Uh, we pray with thanksgiving and, and commitment for uh, the emergency relief uh, ministries that uh, the United Methodist Church is involved in. We pray for um, our town of Ripley we, and, and the, the schools, the teachers, the principals, the uh, politicians, the police, the firemen, um, the business owners, the residents. Uh, Lord, we pray that uh, your blessing would uh, shower upon each of us uh, like the rain is watering the ground right now uh, and that we would be refreshed and renewed. Uh, and strengthened, uh, that we would remember uh, the witness that we bear uh, wherever we are, whenever we are. Lord, uh, hear now the, the prayers that, that we lift to you in our hearts and, and with our own lips. We have sung it loud, Lord. We love you, Lord, and we thank you and we praise you. We join our voices together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
I'm having a good time today. <laughs> that was lovely. That was lovely. <clears throat> I'd like to invite you to stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. Nice. She's pumped up. I like that. From Matthew chapter 18. Then Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, Have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. 
And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay me what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. And then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported it to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in his anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Almighty God, your word is alive and amazing. I pray now that you would speak through me or in spite of me, and that through your servant, your people would be affirmed and blessed and challenged, and that we all would know and love you more. In the name of Christ, our Savior, amen. Uh, a little mistake that I made, well, not a mistake, but uh, thank God for erasers, right? Um, um, uh, when uh, I gave the bulletin information, I had a sermon title that was uh, Relationships, uh, and it was uh, based on the Romans passage. And uh, when I sat down to write, uh, that's not what the Spirit was telling me. Um, so from Romans, though, I will say, um, gosh, be kind to one another. <laughs> be kind to one another. Lift one another up in spirit and in prayer. We all belong to God. I sat down in, in Sunday school uh, today, and I kind of alternate between the adult Sunday school classes, and I don't, I don't know where everybody sits or what their normal seats are, and I sat down and I said to my neighbors, uh, is uh, this somebody's seat? And, and they replied, this is your seat. And I said, that's the right answer. <laughs> I still don't know if I was taking a spot that somebody normally sat in, but they gave me the right answer. Um, this is the seat that you're in, um, and, and it's for you. Uh, and if I, if I took somebody else's seat, uh, they were gracious about it. Um, so anyway, that, that's uh, the, the, the direction I was going with, uh, with relationships. But, but then, um, then I spent some time with this parable, and, and this parable made me consider the extravagant generosity of God. And uh, how surprised was I when, when uh, generosity popped up in our Sunday school classes. <laughs> so... Um, this parable uh, starts off uh, with, with an actual question, Peter asking a question, uh, which uh, Paula has already talked about uh, this morning. Um, Peter thought, yeah, is, is forgiving somebody seven times, you know, is that, is that good? You know, if, if, if I go over here and I smack Michael, and then I say, I'm, I'm, will, will you forgive me? And, and you, you say, of course I will. And then I do it six more times. Each time, will you forgive me? You're going to get pretty tired of it. <laughs> you're going to get pre you're, you're going to be short. Uh, you're going to be upset. Uh, that's what Jesus is talking about, is, is if I keep on offending Michael, Michael's job <laughs> is to forgive me. Not depending on whether I deserve it. <laughs> it's not dependent on that. Um, it's, it's dependent on, on the grace uh, that, that uh, comes when we forgive others. Jesus says 77 times, and, and like Paula said, we would lose count of that. And uh, the, the Greek, you can read it uh, either way. It's, it's not crystal clear. It might say 77 times. It might say 70 times 7. It might be 490. Either way, the, the point is, is clear that... Um, it's more times than we can count. And, and based on the numbers of the parable that, that come up, 
I'm inclined to say it's the 490. It's the 70 times 7. Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like this. A king went to settle accounts with his servants, his slaves, uh, perhaps his, his staff, the, the people who manage his affairs. And one man, the, the common English Bible says, one man owed him 10,000 bags of gold. <laughs> we... Uh, we don't really uh, uh, have a concept uh, as, as just normal people in the 21st century of, of what a talent is, but, but a rough estimation of 10,000 talents would be over $3 billion. Over $3 billion. It's, it's not a payable debt. Do you know uh, about what the difference between a million and a billion is? It's about a billion. <laughs> It's, it's like saying, what's the difference between $1 and $1,000? It's about $1,000. <laughs> uh, so $3 billion is, is beyond the scope of, of somebody to pay. It's, it's really beyond the scope of, of a person, uh, you know, 2,000 years ago to, to accumulate that much debt. But... But Jesus is, is telling an, a story with some extreme numbers here. So that's why I think the, the forgive someone 490 times, I think that's, a, that's pretty extreme. Um, and Jesus uses this astronomical number to demonstrate God's extravagant generosity in forgiving such a debt. The king forgives the massive debt. The king doesn't say, you know, uh, pay, pay what you can, when you can, and that's okay. The king erases the debt, takes Paul as eraser, and erases three billion dollars. I think uh, he didn't need a couple pencils to do that. <laughs> a lot of pencils. And then, and then the servant turns around and uh, imprisons a man who owes him a hundred gold coins. That's what the Common English Bible says. A hundred denarii. A denarii is a, a day's wages. A hundred days' wages. It's nothing small. It's nothing to sneeze at. I caught your sneeze there. Uh, <laughs> it's nothing to sneeze at. It's, you know, maybe $8,000. It's a debt that is payable. It'll take a while. Um, for most people, it'll, it'll take a while to, to pay that. But, but that person can get it paid. Um, and... You know, like uh, 8,000 compared to 3 billion, that's like comparing uh, $1 to a $40,000 loan or, or debt. And, and you know the rest of the story um, about uh, the, the, other, the other servants tell the master and, and, and uh, the master has that, uh, that first one who had the $3 billion debt erased um, thrown into prison. It, it, it made me consider anew the extravagant generosity of God. Do you ever feel like, um, you know, that forgiveness stuff is, is really good for other people, but, I mean, my, my sin, mm, I, mine's too much. Mine's too much. If, if people really knew uh, of, of the darkness that's in me, uh, no, no, I, uh, it's, it's too much. Anybody ever feel like you don't have to raise your hands, but uh, I feel that way sometimes. I feel that way sometimes. Um, I ask myself, what is the cost of my sin? <laughs> what is the weight of my sin? If I, if we were to put it on a uh, in a wheelbarrow, you know, would I be able to move that wheelbarrow? No, I don't think I would be able to to move that wheelbarrow. It'd be more like a, a train car full of, of coal or something else. I wouldn't be able to move it. It's, it's beyond my ability to, to take care of it, but it is not beyond God's ability, and it is not beyond God's desire uh, to take care of that. My sin causes separation between me and God, and, and on my own, I can't make it better. I can't return. I can't reconcile. It's, it's like if I would say, I'm going to pay you back a billion dollars. I could, I could work a, a you know, hundred or a thousand years and, and, and not earn a billion dollars. Um, and, and God forgives that debt. 
God forgives me that, that train car full of, of burden uh, that, that I think is, is mine. Um, and, and, uh, and God gives, gives grace. Uh, and God forgives me and God forgives you. And that is great good news. That is wonderful good news. Uh, it, it feels like a weight that is lifted off my shoulders. I don't have to move that train car. <laughs> and, and when I consider that, Oh, I want to leap for joy. I want to, I, I want to dance. I want to sing. Um, I want to fall down before God and, and, and say, thank you. My, my life is yours. My, my life is yours. And, and just as that uh, forgiveness inspires joy and, and praise in me, uh, Jesus says it, it ought to inspire forgiveness uh, so that when somebody... Um, comes to me and, and they owe me something. Um, maybe, maybe they have uh, offended me um, in, in horrible ways. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe they've done something that we think is, is unforgivable. Um, when I reflect on the, the weight of my sin that has been forgiven, um, I, I ought to turn around and, and offer that forgiveness to others. I'm I'm inspired to forgive others because I've been forgiven. I am inspired to be generous because uh, I have received from God's extravagant generosity. Um, and, you know, God doesn't hold back. God, we approach God uh, with, with small requests, and, and, and God uh, pours out the waterworks on us. Um, uh, when you think about the the first miracle, the the wedding of Cana, um, and and Jesus makes you know those five or six uh, um, uh, vessels of of water, turns them into wine. That's that's thousands of dollars of wine. It's it's not like he just said, well we'll make it okay for everybody. It's thousands and thousands of dollars of value of of the that that simple gift. Uh, God's generosity and grace is, is really extravagant. Um, imagine living in that kind of generosity um, where, where you give and where you forgive, um, listening to, to the, the Spirit of God and, and as opportunities come up, you know what? Uh, I've got resources and, and I, can, I can give. And, and, and I've got spiritual resources, and, and I, can, I can forgive. Um, imagine living uh, in, in generous uh, spirit and generous in love, generous in forgiveness, generous in grace, generosity in, in attitude, uh, generosity in, in understanding. I think it would take a lot of fight out um, if... If I'm stingy with grace and I'm stingy with understanding, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into conflict. And if I'm, if I'm generous with grace and I'm generous with, with understanding and, and patience, uh, I'm going to avoid a lot of those conflicts. And you know what? People are going to want to be around me. <laughs> People are going to want to be around me because I, I make them feel good. I, I lift them up. Um, these, the, the way we act... Uh, inspires other people. Forgiveness inspires forgiveness. Generosity inspires generosity. And, and we live in a world that could use abundant forgiveness and generosity. And like I said, the opposite is, is also true. Um, unforgiveness inspires the same. When we hold a grudge, uh, we find another grudge being held against us. Um, when we uh, are unforgiving, uh, we find ourselves being unforgiven. Uh, and we want to live a, 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 st a style of life that is, is attractive. The world is a bitter place uh, when, when we think only of ourselves. So, I, I ask you, and I ask myself, uh, to, to live generous in spirit as, as God has given us. Live generous in, in grace and attitude and understanding and patience and love and, and you get the picture. Live, live extravagantly generous lives because you have been extravagantly loved and forgiven by a generous God. Will you pray with me? <laughs> God, how can we begin to thank you?
How can we begin to, to say thanks? We, we can't count the, the amount of grace that you have given to us. Uh, and Lord, we pray that that would inspire us uh, to, to be like you, to ask for your direction as well as asking for your forgiveness uh, and to offer to you our very lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'd like to invite you to stand. I know there's no asterisk here, but uh, I'd like to invite you to stand uh, as we proclaim our faith together. This is a, a statement of faith of the United Church of Canada, and, and it is a beautiful spiritual composition. Will you join with me in proclaiming together? We are not alone. We live in God's world. We're not ready to sing yet. <laughs> we are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now we'll sing verses 1 and 3 and 4 and 6 of Jesus, Lord, we look to thee. Let's remain standing. We're going to have uh, the doxology in just a minute. Um, but we say yes to God. We say thank you to God as we give extravagantly and generously like God gives extravagantly and generously to us. Uh, and we enable ministries uh, here in uh, Ripley and around the world uh, because of the ways that we say yes and thank you to God. We've got a number of ways. You can, you can scan a thing. You can write a check. You can put cash in. You can mail it. Uh, I'm sure if you have... Another way of uh, offering, you can do that. Um, and uh, the, the gifts that we give are also our, our talents, our time, our witness, uh, and our service. All of these are uh, gifts acceptable to God. And let us bless those gifts and our very giving uh, as we uh, join together in the doxology. Praise God from
Almighty God, you are the king of the universe. And we come before you with, with uh, our small selves, and you bless and you receive the gifts that we give, and we thank you. Lord, use these gifts. Send them into the world for the increase of your kingdom, that it may come on earth. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, today, I believe, is the last day that you can sign up for uh, the first aid certification class that is being offered next month uh, at Calvary. There's uh, some little tear-offs on the window in the hallway uh, if you want to sign up for that. Um, and we've got a staff parish meeting this Tuesday. We've got a Bible study and a grief group tomorrow. Uh, and we are working on the, uh, the church budget for the next uh, week or two. Uh, and our finance committee will meet uh, shortly after that. Um, so uh, let us live in grace and peace and, and wonder. And uh, we'll uh, sing our closing hymn, Go, Make of All Disciples. You can give them out to somebody. You can uh, put them in your kitchen uh, and uh, go through the prayer list again. And go in the peace and the grace and the extravagant generosity of God who calls you to follow him. Amen.